Tell me in your own words what happened on May 31st, 2020. Uh, I will start with just a lot of frustration. A um, lot of frustration. Not only with, you know, the racial climate of everything, the George Floyd stuff, stuff that's been going on for decades. My dad passed yeah. late April. Um, so all of that. Mm-hmm. And we were, and I think the the piece that a lot of people forget when we're looking back, because it's now been almost three years, we were stuck inside. Stuck. We were inside, and we had no idea what was going on with COVID-19, with the pandemic. We were just told, you can't leave the house. Yep. So I couldn't couldn't travel. I wasn't doing shows. Um, So no creative outlet, or or a limited amount, at least. Very limited. Yeah. Uh, I could always, you know, turn on and go live. I think it was trying to do... Uh, Everybody and, was on Instagram live at the time. Yeah, me and my guy were talking about doing a podcast, and we eventually started it after that. But, yeah, man, I just – I that whole week has just been leading up to I'm pissed off about social climate in this country. Yeah. I've been seeing mayoral candidates um, fight about this statue. They tried to put a black box around it. The state government got involved. It was like, if you take it down, it's going to cost this much money and all this. And I'm like, bro, that statue is right in front of City Hall. Y'all see it every day. Just do something. But then I, I didn't realize at the time, like, oh, they were being political. They were trying to make a political stand. They never. Who were you expecting, like Mayor Woodfin, to do something? He at wasn't the time? mayor um, in when I first. No, when I first started hearing about it, he wasn't the mayor. Him so when and was this? him and Bell were fighting about it. So this is 16, 17. Okay. You can go just Google. Okay. Um, Birmingham 27 mayoral debate and okay. see what the first issue is. Okay. It's the statue. I wasn't in Birmingham at the time yeah. of, of the election, so. Right. But okay. no, you should watch it just for history's sake. Okay. And so it wasn't me that started the conversation about the statue. Mm. It was them. All I was like, well, let's do something about it. Right. But fast forward that day, man, they asked me to um, come speak about the census, encourage everybody to <laughs> fill out the census or whatever. And this was I, what was happening at Kelly Ingram that day because I remember yeah, there being everybody yeah. being at the park. I think I remember seeing you, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of you know our elected officials at the right. at the park. I think right. Ricky Smiley, Doug there. Jones it was, was there, yeah. Mayor Woodfin. But was there. what had really pissed me off, what really tipped tipped me over, I was at Kelly Ingram the day before. Okay, there was a rally. Uh huh. Dude, probably I have never seen that many white people. In Kelly Ingram Park. Okay. I had my drone out um, just getting the pictures like, wow, there's a lot of people. I yeah. just thought they were serious. Came out with their signs and everything. And yeah. after they heard the speakers, they just left. They ain't do nothing. They just went home. I'm assuming they went back <laughs> That's to. That's what they do. <laughs> I'm assuming they went back to Fultondale, went back to the, over the mountain, wherever. Yeah. yeah. I was. Live it. Well, what were you expecting for for, for it to happen? Because I don't remember. Because, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I don't know mm-hmm. which day, if it was the 30th or the 31st that I was at the park. Yep. But I was there, and me and some friends had walked down there from her place. I don't remember what we did afterwards either. Mm-hmm. I know I was like, I'm not one to be up in the streets, you know, doing <laughs> the violence. That stuff. I'm not about that life. I'm not even going to try to pretend. But I'm going to use my voice, okay? Yeah. I'm going to speak, and I'm going to. Do my part, what I feel like I'm led to do. No, that's a good question. What did I expect? I don't know what I expected. I just know whatever they did, it didn't sit right with me. So, essentially, white people being white people by being performative, as always, and you were hoping that this was going to be the thing that changed. I think we all did. Yeah. Because we saw, how, like, all of a sudden, white people are saying Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Like, we've been saying Black Lives Matter for almost a decade, and y'all were, like, all lives mattering us. And now y'all are saying it with us. Okay, so this must mean that you guys this are got in, to be the, the change. This got to be the time that you guys are actually. Dude, with when us they in this. when they came and they left, I remember uh, telling she's my girlfriend at the time, my wife. Now I said, I said, babe, oh my god, I'm so pissed off. She's like, what? I was like, these people, they just they just get to leave. Like we yeah. still black and we got to deal with everything. Yeah, stuff every day. Yeah. And she said, yeah, that's crazy. I said, I tell you what, if they ever let me. Speak at one of these things. I'm going to say something real. <laughs> she was, she literally <laughs> told me, she was like, you ain't going to do nothing. Bet. I didn't know it would be the next day. 
I was just out there. I think I saw somebody on the mayor's camp. I was like, oh, funny, man. What's up, man? You want to come up and speak about the census? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. But I remember what I said the day before. Ricky, me and Ricky was there. We was talking. He was like, man, they want me to speak, so I'm going to get up and say something. If you look at the video, I'm stone-faced behind Ricky. It's so many thoughts and stuff going through my head, like what should I say when I get on this mic? It was clear as day to me. I didn't have a speech prepared. Ricky ends his speech. I step up to the mic. <laughs> Everybody behind me smiling at first. And then I get into my spiel, and I bring up that statue, told him to meet me, and everybody behind me scrambling like, what the hell just happened? I was like, it's on now. <laughs> and then. Can't take it back. Listen, they they feeling away, and uh, they was feeling away so much. Doug Jones, the senator at the time, mm-hmm. was asked to get up, and at the end of the speech he got, he added on telling people to not touch the statue. That was the moment that pretty much led everybody. If they'd have just let my speech stand. They probably wouldn't have done nothing. They would have forgot about but it. But here go this white man trying to be political and insert himself and tell people what not to do when they're already angry. And you, that was the moment. People already rebelling. Everybody out there started booing and hissing, and they said, man, what time you say be out there? <laughs> I ain't even remember. I was like, oh, seven, <laughs> seven thirty. I don't know. After dinner, let me text you. <laughs> but he he lit the he lit the match. People met me out there. Um, I gave another speech, and where I told them multiple times, don't don't loot. Like I said it in my own I, way. I do remember that, yeah. But I was don't like, damage don't damage the city. You said don't don't. Th- with, there's a lot of black businesses over here. Don't touch the church. Don't touch the Fourth Avenue business district. I said all of that. Yeah. So I bluntly, I told him, I said, if y'all touch a leaf on a tree out here, we're going to whoop your ass. This is literally on tape. Said it multiple times. Mm-hmm. Everything was controlled. We were at the statue. It was getting a little rowdy in the so park, but the, we were still in the park. Well, what was the plan? You guys decided to meet at the mm-hmm. statue, and then what was going to happen? We were just going to tear it down. And if we so had the plan got was it down. to get there and tear it down. Yes. Okay. If we had gotten it down, I'm telling you. That crowd would have erupted. We were counting down. We had a truck out there trying to pull it. That statue was stubborn as racism itself. <laughs> it wouldn't move. <laughs> here, here comes the mayor and his team and the police chief. And the kids were actually excited to hear him. I've been at many a protest. I've never seen them excited to see the police and the mayor. <laughs> so they clearly like him. But he comes out, he says, I'm going to finish the job for y'all, but y'all got to go home. They booing, hissing. I'm like, in my head, like, Negro, you can't, this your first protest? You can't say that. So he he cleared his throat like, oh, maybe y'all didn't hear me. Let me say it again. <laughs> he said it again. It got, the booze got louder. So now me and him are negotiating. And he's like, man, tell him this. I'm like, I ain't what you want me to tell him for. He said, you they leader. You the mayor. Right. We had his back and forth. I finally tell him, I was like, y'all, the mayor say he need a few more hours. I think we should give it to him. Of course, mm-hmm. they not happy. Yeah. But, um, you know, they, they listen. He walked away kind of probably a little bit embarrassed. Mm-hmm. Um, and to my credit, I tried to keep him in the park. Mm-hmm. So I said, hey, y'all, they told us to stop, but I ain't, you know, I ain't stopping. Like, we still here. That was just my way of keeping them in the park and not going out. Turns out I was right. Violence but erupted. They, it started getting They started cleared out the park. Kids started, went everywhere. Yeah. They looted. And then they tried to blame me. Yeah. Which so I'm next, like. I, and, I, and so I was at home watching this because I yeah. think all the, the local news outlets were streaming this live. You mm-hmm. at the park. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing you negotiating with Mayor Woodfin. And mm-hmm. then you guys just kind of leaving. And then I'll never forget ABC 3340, Stephen Quinn reporting mm-hmm. live somewhere, one of the streets downtown, not far from the courthouse. Mm-hmm. And he gets like hit live on yeah. TV. And like he's bleeding. And I just remember seeing people like running up and down the streets, just tearing up stuff. And I was just like, I know that this was not part of the plan. And then the right. next day waking up and seeing you were charged with inciting a riot. Right. Yeah. Right. And so keep were you my- surprised? Hell yeah. Not only surprised, I was like livid. 
Yeah. And I ain't know who to be livid at. Like, how could y'all come and the most pissed off part to me, y'all threw rocks through black businesses yeah. in the historic 4th Avenue district. What the, who are y'all? Because these weren't the ones I was out there with, with the statue thing. Yeah, it was a different and, group of people. Yeah, and so I got to work immediately. The next day, I go out there just to kind of see the, the damage yeah. and talk to the owners. Um, while I'm out there, I go by the statue, and I see J.J., I see Carol Robinson and all them. JJ um, Pruitt. Yeah, I wasn't finna talk to them, but JJ is my guy. Yeah. JJ stops me, asks me like some Carol questions. Robinson? JJ stops me, asks me some questions, and um, I answer the question. I ain't. I forgot we were live. I I'm, I'm going in about these blue eyed Jesus. <laughs> all my frustrations, and of course I curse no air. So now these everybody just upset look at him. he's villain villain this and that i'm not thinking about none of that i'm going to talk to the business who is calling you that white people okay online and and hanker head and what what uh eric may say handkerchief head negroes so man i hate reliving all this so literally now is building up. Yeah, man, he's angry. He looks like a good face to be the villain. He told people to go to the park. He's the villain. This is all going around while I'm out raising money and speaking to the business. Trying on to it. help clean up what other people have done that you really didn't try to do. Get people to do. Yeah. This is when I knew some was up. I cause I had a million text messages. I didn't even check my text messages, but I saw Mayor Woodfin inside of uh, uh, one of the doctor's offices, she, um, Dr. Adams. She sells glasses and eyewear. Mm -hmm. I run into him in there, and I wait till he's done talking to his people, and he comes over to me, and I try to holler at him real quick, like, hey, man, I know it's a crazy situation, but, you know, we'll talk. I thought we was on the same team. He gave me a look and brushed me off. I was like, oh, I know what that means. I said, oh, I know what that means. <clears throat> but I was like, you know what? Got other stuff going on. I'll come back to that later. What does that mean? He got beef. He was feeling the way about me. Yeah. He was he was feeling the way toward me. Yeah. So uh, all that goes on. I finally read some text messages. And these were text messages from like after midnight the night before. <clears throat> some pretty prominent people, some of my frat brothers who work at, City Hall, mm -hmm. some people affiliate that work at City Hall, some people I know in media was like, the mayor about to blame you for all of this. And because of the interaction we had at that store and then me seeing them text messages from the previous night, I was like, oh. You believed it. It was all there. Yeah, yeah. It was all there. And then some of his people – had mentioned me on Facebook talking about this is all on you. I still got all the screenshots from all this. This well, was from like uh, close to midnight at nighttime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. Um, so to, in my mind, the plan was decided during or right after all the riot and the looting, we gonna blame Maine. When we get up in the morning, and so I'm hearing my name. I'm getting caught up on social. As a reporter, Mayor Whiffin has a press conference. And the reporter asks about all this still on YouTube, by the way. Reporter asks him about me by name. And he says something to the effect like. Who was I, the reporter? Do you remember? It's a woman. I can't. I don't, I can't never remember. I just, I, I just I, I'll remember. mess around and say the wrong name. Brenda Ladun. It probably wasn't her. It was not Brenda Ladun. I can it, guarantee you that, but okay. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. Okay. It, I don't know. I love all my local ladies of news, but uh, she asked them, <laughs> say, you know, a lot of people are saying, funny man, what do you think? He makes a face like this. And he said, pretty much said, I need to be kept in check, you know, my influence or whatever. And then he said, uh, if we find proof, enough proof that somebody, you know, that he had something to do with it, then we'll bring charges. They brought the charges, but they never had the proof. I was about to say, the charges came pretty quickly after that. So what 
fruit. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. The night that everything happened, I believe there was a meeting at City Hall, and they decided I was going to be the fall guy. Okay. That backfired hellaciously. Because I them. remember a lot of people who were actually on the ground – yeah. They they were like, this isn't what if if I'm recalling that correctly, I think that's what I remember seeing online. It it honestly became a black white thing. It became a black white thing. To black people, it was like, hell yeah, that's our guy. We support him. Whatever he need. Like, he a real one. Mm -hmm. White people. Lock him up. Lock him up. Yeah. Lock him up. And he was giving them what they wanted. They they could not. When you say wait. he, you're you're talking about the mayor. I am. Okay. So um. Yeah, man, that just that just really like ticked me off. One of my frat brothers called me. He was like, "Man, they just put a warrant out." Like he he was like, "Dude, they, they he was on the phone. He was like, dude, 'Dude, I'm looking at them. They writing it right now.'" Mm -hmm. So he was like, uh, "This is what you need to do: X, Y, and Z. Boom, boom, boom." Um, and then uh, black people start showing up, showing out. Well, so, before we get there, yeah, because I feel like I, I remember. Maybe a month or two after this happened, mm -hmm. you tweeting something along the lines of, um, you remember all the people who kind of turned their backs on you. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. so so what is it that you saw? What did you experience in the aftermath? Um, I just saw a lot of people ready to forget everything that I've done in Birmingham. Like, forget Every day I try to be positive on the radio. Forget that I've been in every high school, middle school. Forget that I'm never in any trouble. Forget that I'm always putting Birmingham in a good light. Forget that I got all these awards from the city. Forget that I work with the Division of Youth Services. Forget that I got, you know, just I'm a Birmingham boy to throw me under the bus for something I knew I didn't do. And it made y'all feel good because y'all knew ultimately that's what white people wanted to like, you know. You feel like that's what a lot of black people in the community felt like yeah. too? Okay. Hell yeah. I think it was a lot of suit and tie and heels wearing black folks mm. that jumped on that really, really fast. And I saw a lot. And then, man, I, 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 I had to reach out to the mayor. I was messaging him through social media, which is how we use it, communicate it. But I was just telling him we need to talk. He never responded. Got his phone number from a mutual friend. And when I talked to him, oh, he had such a terrible attitude. And he wouldn't answer none of my questions. He was just, he was just real standoffish, attitude horrible. So I was like, fine, man. I said, what, bro, what do you need from me? What, what 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 do you need? Well, he said, man, just go back, tell your people if they know something, do this. But I asked him, I said, Mayor, do you think I encourage people to go start a riot? I asked him twice. He never answered. And I went and did what he said. I got on live. Like, if y'all know anything, say something. Know um, anything in regards to what specifically? Like, like yeah, the like groups of people who are riding in the city? Absolutely. I, I, but if that's what he said he wanted, whatever. Um... My people from Steelman started a kind of campaign online. Okay. Like, Jermaine Johnson is this. Like, they literally, it was hundreds of Facebook posts that was getting shared. That Jermaine Johnson is, um, he's a great guy. He's a servant. They were posting pictures i never seen, me working with kids, all that. So, Steelman got it started, and the black people of Birmingham jumped in, and, and they were so pissed off at Randall it became an article. You know, the Black Lives Matter local chapter was like, you got your foot on Maine's neck. You need to, you know, mm. let him up. So now he calls me back mm. after all the pressure. Mm. Totally different attitude. For, he, he, let, let, me, yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah, Before yeah. he called you and he was saying that he wanted you to go on your platform and ask mm -hmm. for people to, or ask for you to ask people mm -hmm. to share what they know, he wasn't coming public and saying anything about him thinking any other people were possibly guilty. While I was having, while I was getting death threats, while I was getting my name sullied, while I was 
losing thousands of followers on social media while I'm going through all this. Mm -hmm. He was on national media. Mm -hmm. He was on with Al Roker in the morning show. He's on CNN, Roland Martin, as the mayor who took down the statue. That's what I'm seeing. Because if I remember correctly, he did take it to the council about because because I think the state has a a law that mm-hmm. if you remove the Confederate statues in the state, you have to pay a twenty five thousand fine that comes from that municipality. So yeah. if I remember correctly, not long after that, he took it to the city council to see if they would approve paying that twenty five thousand dollar fine. If he, I remember, he never correctly. had to. The people of Birmingham, black and white, they raised that twenty five thousand dollars the next day. Okay. It was gone. So that fine was done. That GoFundMe probably got up over 40000 Okay. He never had to use city funds. Okay. Yeah, but he just, you know, he was out doing his thing. Hey, I took down the statue. Mind you, so did you've you feel had way three about years. That? Of, hell yeah. Because he's taking all the credit on national platforms, yeah, and he's it, not even saying this was started by. and. No, it wasn't even that. I never wanted credit. It's just I thought we were on the same page. But if you're going to take credit, take the credit. But don't throw me under the bus while, while you're, taking, you're taking the credit. Okay. Just take the credit, but help me clear my name a little bit. It okay. never happened. Then, like I said, when the pressure and the heat got on him, he calls me with a totally different attitude. Hey, man, I'm not coming for you. I probably said two words on that phone call. I just let him talk. When was this? This was... It was all, I don't know, within a two-week thing that oh, all this is going on. Oh, because not long after. Okay. Yeah. And I just didn't have nothing for him after that, man. Have y'all talked since? Yeah. Y'all look we, cool uh, now, right? We talked. We, uh, you know, we got a lot of mutual friends, man, and I felt for the, for Birmingham, me and him needed to talk. We met one-on-one, no cameras, no nothing. And I told him what was on my mind, mm-hmm. like in very blunt terms. Yeah. Let him know how I felt. He let me know how he felt. And after that, we shook hands. I'm like, I'm done with it. That's how I'm built. I'm like, once we talk about it face to face, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, our relationship probably never be the same, but I need him to do well. He's our mayor. I'm not going to yeah. just root against him. Right, yeah. But, you know. The trust is broken. I'm like, dude, that was my lowest moment. You you weren't there, my bro. And before this happened, you would say that you guys had were friends or man, had listen. a really solid relationship. Man, listen, I can I can show you a video. Like, man, funny man, great guy in the community. Love you, man. It was that type of vibe. Mm. I was hosting everything the city would do. It was that type of vibe. Mm. But now I just I'm not gonna make an issue of it. I'm gonna always speak to him. I'm gonna always support him. But you know, yeah, trust. Yeah, Mm-mm. you still feel like it's broken. It's broken. I don't feel like it's broken. But I don't. I don't put myself in a position. You just don't hold where I have to trust him. Okay. Or I need for him to you know be in my corner. Yeah. That's it. That makes me sad. No, it shouldn't. I know, but it does. No, it just, that's life, man. That's life. Like you said, if he called me right now, hey, we need something for on behalf of the city, I'm there. Yeah. But if anything on a personal level, friendly level, 